a child was received by prophecy. A child was received by angelic declaration after the same order that people like John the Baptist, people like Jesus enter time, that an angel appeared and say your wife will be with child and when she is with child, you will, you will, you will keep this consecration that no blade will come upon his hair. She will not take any strong drink throughout the days of her conception and throughout the whole gestation period until she put to bed that no strong drink will enter her mouth. So from the birth of this child, there are already consecrations to be kept. There are consecrations if Israel will receive a deliverer, the people who will bring that deliverer into time. There are consecrations they must keep. And so when the prophecy came to Manoah, he says, although it looks like the case on ground looks hopeless, he says, a child will come. And when the child comes, these are the consecrations we must keep. I want to, as quick as possible, I want to show us certain things that are consistent with the life of deliverers. Because it's not enough that you arrive. It's not enough that you manifest. <laughs> you can manifest and you can begin to make one or two areas of impact, but it is not enough. Hallelujah. It wasn't just enough that the child has been born because every single consecration it takes to help him enter time was met accurately the mother did not submit herself to drinks she didn't defy that consecration and so a child that has been born after a superior order the bible made us to understand that the spirit of the lord will mantle something anytime he stirs himself up that he can stir himself and carry a jawbone and it will be like a weapon in his hand. It was just a bone. But because of the spirit of the Lord that mantles him anytime he stares himself. Emphasis on that word, stare. In fact, the moment they were able to find a way to, to, to trap him through the deception that Delilah brought him into, the first thing that the Bible said was that Samson got up and he shook himself as he does usually. It means anytime something wants to wield that power, he begins, he begins to trouble himself. Certainly a kind of strength. This is what the Bible was making reference to. It says, in a certain season, an angel of the Lord will go and trouble the water. It will stir the water. It will shake the water. The water is the word. The word can be still. The word can be stable. The moment it is troubled, that's where, that's where the impact, that's where energy that's where capacities are wielded from. You can hold the Bible in your hand and it doesn't feel like it's talking to you until an angel comes and trouble it. The word angel means messenger. Anytime you are seated at a place where the word of God is being opened, if you are wise, you'll be waiting for which scripture will be stirred today. The moment anything is troubled, you can enter it. If it is not troubled, it means there are unusual understanding you can come into at the cost of of the communication that you can come into a personalized knowledge of a particular scripture. It is at that time you can dive into it. Did you now understand that condition that anybody that can enter first, it means it's not everybody that is hearing the same thing. There are people whose ear, he that had an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the church. This particular ear they describe as an ear, it is that person that is able to gather his focus into the presence. What it means is that although you have two ears, there is a possibility that there are other opinions, other voices, other suggestions brewing in your heart, even in God's presence. But anybody that can shut that other gate and focus only on receiving the verdict of God, this is what it means by he that has an ear. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, it says, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. However, you have two eyes. Is the Bible saying you should be closing one eye? He's saying these two eyes you have is, is communicative of the fact that you have capacity to focus on different things. But if you can cast
cast your gaze only on the word, only on he, only on God, only on the revealed dimensions of God. He says, your whole body shall be full of light. So it's about focus. It's a game of focus. It's a warfare of focus. No, if, if, I, if, I, take, if I take some, some stock here now, the number of people whose 100% attention is in this hall, they will not be more than one or two. You don't know how many parts, how many channels, how many percentage of your heart is always wandering in thoughts. Many of you, it's as I said this thing now that you just came here. You are in class, but you are not with the lecturer. You are in church, you are not with the preacher. This is how one day you will be with your wife, you are not with her. Always absent-minded. And everywhere, everywhere you are at the moment, what they do is that they make sure that you are not present. So you are always wandering away. I am trying to build something around the deliverer, Samson. The consecration about his birth was kept. And so finally, a mighty weapon of God had found expression into time. Although Samson has entered time, from time to time we began to see that the spirit of God will move him and he will begin to judge the Philistines, begin to, 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 to afflict them in the measure that they have made Israel go through all these years. But it came to pass that the Philistines understood the art of war. Many military men have camped against Samson and he has slain them in their numbers. So they found out brute strength will not be the way to prevail over him. So they began to inquire, what are the areas of his obsession? What are the things that he loves? It will interest you to know that at various occasions, Samson will go into the land of the Philistines, the enemy's land, and go and spend a night in a prostitute's house and get up in the morning and remove the gate of their city and put on his shoulder. Do you understand what Samson did? Is that they had, they had a, a gossip that something is inside the land of the Philistines. That he is lodged in one prostitute's house. They now quickly went and locked the gate of the city. That if we lock the gate, we will see where he will follow. So what we will do is that in the morning we will now catch him and we will deal with him. He woke up early morning and went to the gate that was locked. Do you know what a city looked like? And removed the gate of the city and put on his shoulder. And carried it and kept on a rock. Where did he stand up from before he carried that gate? Are you, you, you will pretend like you don't know. <laughs> the bed of fornication. Got up from fornication and carried the gate of a city. I need you to sometimes cast your eyes to, to anything that show you how kingdoms were built in those days. When they built gates of cities, they calculate war into that design. They calculate capacity to withstand stress capacity to withstand attack so imagine one man collided with a gate removed it and carried it along but he got up from the bed of fornication it means there's something about the ordination of a deliverer that when he begins to walk in his days of manifestation if he begins to wander out of the path of consecration his horn will not leave him he can be in compromise and still be wielding strength he can be in iniquity and still be operating in power. He can be operating that gift even in, the, in, in that corrupt lifestyle. Because from the studios of eternity where he was fashioned from, from the place where they wired his unique, his unique capacities into him, they did, not, they did not tie it to a covenant that uh, if, if only he is righteous. The only consecration that keeps something was the hair. And it means that as long as the hair is not caught. Other areas of violations cannot break that covenant. The covenant is let no blade come upon this. Did you? Did, what I'm trying to say, in case somebody is not listening to me, is that what Satan will do is that he will allow you venture into certain layers of compromise. Then it will look like there is no repercussion for sin. It will look like every day is for the thief. It will look like God is slow. There is no judgment. You will now get used to that lifestyle of compromise. But the real attack is a covenant. 
Now I have wondered for many years, why would I be dating a person that is asking me for, my, for the secret, for, for, for how they can kill me? Why would somebody be crying? And when I ask you, why are you crying, love? You now say, you don't want to tell me how we can kill you. <laughs> how can, I, I, I cannot, I cannot understand that situation. Then you will now so stress me out that I will now be so wearied. I now tell you how to, how to destroy me. That is what you are looking for. Put, put yourself in something shoe, maybe. Just try and see. How did love shock you to that extent? I don't care whether they were rubbing your head. <laughs> the question is, how, how, how can we tame you? And you use your mouth and you were explaining it in details. Now see, the first day, I, I used, just so that the case you will not stress me, I now told you that if you can tie me with fresh leaves, cut from palm, I will be weak. When I now opened my eyes, the next morning I saw fresh leaves on my hand and my leg. Is that not enough sign? Enough sign that some, something is happening here. Then as I now cut the rope, you, my love, now got very angry and started crying again. That you lied to me. <laughs> what, what is happening here? Let's, let's pause first. I have strong reasons to believe if Samson was a Nigerian, that relationship would end in... Did you know why, listen, look at me. Did you know why he continued in that relationship and continued divulging secrets? It's because he had journeyed in compromise so long that he thought that the covenant cannot be broken based on how he can go and lie with a prostitute and get up and stare himself. The, you see, this is how you can just stay by yourself, by yourself and yield to temptation fall for the sin of masturbation watch pornography and choke your heart with filthiness then you will now say tomorrow you fast you know what you are doing that fasting is you are staring yourself you stare yourself with fasting by 3 p.m your spirit is charged you now start walking like a colossus again if any man being christ is a new creature when you are done with that satan wants you to be enjoying the the, the crisscrossing you are doing between darkness and light so you you go for your vacation in darkness you come back into light you wander into darkness you come back into light. one of these days you will not come back you will not come back my emphasis this evening is judges chapter 16 there is an opening there that made a lot of sense. The Bible says, And Samson loved a woman in the valley of Sorek. He came into a place where he now, he now became affectionate to a woman in the valley of Sorek. Whose name is what? See, listen. You know, there are many names in the Bible that because of one person's behavior, everybody ran from the name. Before Judas, that name was a popular... <laughs> maybe, maybe you should go and check the meaning of Judas and, and, and see. It's a, it's a good thing. Did you know the last time you saw anybody bearing Judas? Eh? You don't need to add his carrier, just <laughs> Judas. Okay, let's, let's come into... Nigeria. I don't want to call some, some names. Meanwhile, do you know that people bear Gabriel, people bear Michael, you know, have you heard Lucifer? Eh? You know why? Although Lucifer is the form that is unfolding, it, it was the accurate angel. But because Satan once occupied that office, they, they say, I, don't, I don't want anything. <laughs> People don't want anything that can link them in any way to any negative feeling. So just imagine something. They say somebody is 
a secret enemy in this our church here that there's somebody that is a betrayer in this our midst but we don't know who the person is then we're not asking everybody their name then somebody got up somewhere there and said his name is lucifer do you know that subconsciously your suspicion would your heart would just say let's be careful with this <laughs> i'm doing all of this on a lighter note he says and samson loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The moment Samson, being a deliverer, fortified with strength, the moment his affection cleaved to something, the Philistines knew that they have gotten what they were looking for. They did not come to Samson, they went to Delilah. The same way Satan never went to Adam, he went to Eve. He waits until you have loved something. It is that thing that becomes the area. Lost thing, I'm talking about how has the mighty fallen. Every time a mighty fall, check the narrative. You will see that it was his obsession that they brought him down with. Check the narrative. You will see that it was her affection that they used to trace the areas where they could pull her down from. Now, Samson had lived fulfilling the mandate of what the ordination that was what God spake concerning him. He was fulfilling it. He was a judge in Israel. However, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. If there was any crime of Samson, it was loving a woman in the valley of Sorek. Now look at what his, his father began to tell him. That is there no woman in the whole of the land of Israel for you? Why did you go into this Gentile? That is where he likes So the Philistines finally wearied Samson through Delilah, whom he loved. And the day he became vulnerable enough to disclose the secret of the covenant that keeps his strength, the Philistines prevailed over him by using Delilah to shave his hair. The moment his hair was shaved in Judges chapter 16, she woke him up in the morning because they will always test whether the anointing is still on your head. They are always testing. They can't, they can't, they can't collide against you when the oil of God still flows upon your head. So what they are doing is they are checking, has the oil dried? Has it dried? After, after that fall from masturbation, they will come and check, is it, is it dried? <laughs> you know what that, is it dried is? You will, will just be on your bed like this. Suddenly you will just feel like something is it's, it's, it's pressing you, something is pressing you. You wanted to say, G, 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 you struggle small. Then when you, when you shake the thing off, you now start there blasting in tongue. Then they now see your garment spiritually is mounting you again. Say, Kai, the oil is still there. <laughs> what they are looking for is the day where the hand of God will lift from your head. Where you become Ichabod. The glory has departed. Is that day their real plan? You don't know the number of Philistines hiding behind the fence. They cannot enter the house yet. They just need Delilah to give them a sign that Otilo. What is that Delilah in your life that has been set in your life to sap the grace out of your life, to take the horn of God, to take the written code of your ordination? I'm not talking about Delilah like just, you know, a case of sexual immorality. Anything programmed into your life to create occasion for compromise and to deflate your standing in God is a Delilah. And on that certain day, as usual, Delilah said, the Philistines be upon you, Samson. And he got up, stared himself as usual. And the Bible says, he knew not that the Lord has left him. One of these days you will get up in the night again and want to say, Father, forgive me. I'm sorry, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry. I plead the blood of Jesus over. Da, 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 da. In the name of Jesus, I challenge. You don't know he has left you. It is in that day your sharp, sharp repentance will not work again. It is in that day thrones will rise. Princes that have hidden themselves behind appetites princes that are hid behind masturbation they will come out and show you their, their identity. It is in that day the name of Jesus will not be strong in your mouth. 
because you have lost something. You have lost something. There is a stand you have in God, kept by a covenant. If you journey in willful sin for long, you will forsake your mercy. When you forsake your mercy, not even God can help you. The place that princes fix the battle is in that particular arena where you have forsaken your mercy. They know that if they combat you, even in sin, the mercy of God can still defend you. So they need you to continue to walk in constant rebellion until you journey out of the provision of grace. Where your conscience becomes smeared. Nothing pricks your heart again when you sin. Where you begin to plan sin for tomorrow. You begin to stay in today. Tomorrow that you have not seen, you have factored sin into it. You have planned traveling to go and spend the weekend with some that 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 this time now your heart is perpetually creating avenues for iniquity. When you have reached that place, you have ventured into a reprobate mind. That is where the battle between princes are set because they don't want God to intervene when they collide with you. They want the presence to have lifted from your life. So the same man who slept with a prostitute got up and took the gate of a city and put upon his shoulder. That same man woke up one day and shook himself. And for the first time, he could not lose the fetters. Then she signaled them that you can now come. When the Philistines came and took something, look at me everybody, follow me. The first thing they did, they removed his eyes. I'm showing you the progression of the attack that will be measured into the season of a deliverer. A day will come by the time you forsake the assignment, by the time you are falling out of favor. You will be in the center of the type of situation they sent you into time to deliver. You will be in that family where you were sent to command deliverance for them and your ears will hear their cry and their cry will not break your heart again. You will see, you who are sent to become the bread of the poor, you will see poor people, you will see the needy, even with money in your account, your heart cannot feel their pain anymore because you have lost your vision. They have taken your eyes away. You don't have capacity to answer the call of he that sent you anymore. You who are sent to bond all kinds of fractured marriages that anywhere Satan try to create and plant seed of discord, it will be through God's deposit in your life that he, will, he would merge that home together. Now, when you hear people angrily quarreling, you just mind your business and say it's not, you have lost, they've removed your eyes. Their first intention when they have access to you is to remove your eyes. Did it, did it not surprise you that after the different attacks, after the impact of Samson's vengeance on these guys, that when they caught him, they did not kill him. They immediately removed his eyes. Their intent was to make Samson a mockery, to make him lose the capacity to see. 